great. Yeah. Uh, good uh, afternoon. Hold on. <laughs> good afternoon to you. Actually, I don't I don't have your name uh, handy. Oh, it's uh, Aaron Kupferberg. Aaron Kupferberg. Wow, cool. Yeah, and I'm and I run so, Power Papaholic. Well, then let me say a Zissen Pesach to you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Are, are you any relation to Tuli Kupferberg? Everyone asks me that. Everyone? <laughs> Everyone. Knows? Everyone I meet in, in the music business asks wow. me if I'm related to Tuli. I know who he is. Unfortunately, we're not related. <laughs> you know, I, I actually saw the fugs. Really? <laughs> I saw the fugs. Yep. And he wow. was amazing. They were, they were actually a great band. Yeah, I've I've heard recordings and everything. He Tuli was pretty unique character. Um, yeah, you know, for sure. And he was a yeshiva student. Yep. Wow. He yeah. Knew, he knew all the all the all the stuff, man. I tell you, <laughs> <laughs> it was a That's time. Great. Well, thank you for joining me. Uh, you know, at this time, I wanted to you know introduce you to you know the audience. We're going to record this and um, cool. I'm going to share it out. Um, Eric Bazilian, a, you know, singer, songwriter, multi instrumentalist, arranger, <laughs> you know, uh, founder of the Hooters, one of my favorite early bands from the '80s, probably one of the best bands in the '80s. Uh, also did yeah. the, uh, the Grammy nominated "One of Us" with Joan uh, for Joan Osborne as well. And since that time, I want to talk about after this you know, in, yeah. in 2000 and everything. And I, I honestly, I know you went, you were independent for a while. Uh, you went away from the major labels and you have been putting out things uh, on your own. And I have to say, I, you know, initially I wasn't following your career pretty much in 2000. Well, no. But yeah, nobody, um, I mean, in, in anticipation of this interview, I listened to, you know, The Optimist. I have to tell you, I love the song Driving in England. What a great song. What a great um, composition and, and everything. Um, I, you know, it, it has to go to a wider audience. So I'm recommending everybody check out The Optimist. Great album. Uh, that, that song just hooked me right away. It's, you know. Thank you. Classic. That song, that song is sort of my mission statement. I mean, that whole album, it, it's funny. I, I actually spent five years making that album off and on. And then by the time I finished I just didn't really have the juice to to get really do what, what was what had been necessary to promote it. I did send it to my friends at the majors, what was left of them at the time, and nobody was interested. And you know, frankly, I was doing other things, and I just sort of let it die on the vine, which is sad. But I, I still love that album. That's really sort of the that's sort of the um, that for me that's the bar. You know what? Right. The, the, you know, I, that, I, that was me learning Pro Tools. I learned, you know, I learned how to record. I mixed that whole thing. I, every sound on that, every every note on that. Yeah, I, and, and I think it's such a great song. And the album itself, it, it has varying different types of styles with it. It's not just power pop like that first song. It kind of moves around. Even your, your follow-up album, I like the song Insomnia a lot. That's a great nice. song too. Um, but now uh, you've been pretty active recently. You have a few new singles out. You're going to come out with a new album. Uh, one of the new singles I heard was Sarah When She's Sleeping. And there's yep. a video for that as well. Tell me a little bit about this song. Who is Sarah? And Because it's got a great hook in that chorus. Of course, I love that stuff. Tell me a little bit about the song. I write very few love songs. Love songs is just it's hard to find a unique angle on a love song. And, um, you know, I've got so many other unique angles that just plow through me into, onto my guitar, into the microphone. Um, but this one, the words just came to me, Sarah is my wife. Um, uh, I wasn't thinking about what happens when she's sleeping, uh, although she makes some really sweet sounds when she's sleeping. Um, uh, some might call it snoring. I, I call it comforting. Um, and then something that, that someone pointed out to me, which I found very significant, is I actually wrote one of us um, when she had first moved over to the U.S. from, from Sweden, and um, li literally within a week. And she asked me to show her how I make a song. And I had my four-track cassette recorder at the time. That was what everyone had. And I had a guitar riff. and um, I made a little track and played it back for her. And she said, great, now sing it. And, uh, at, you know, at the time, it, I wasn't really, 
I wasn't all in with my, my process of stream of consciousness writing, which is mostly how I write. I'll right. create musical backing. I'll put the microphone and record and things come out. Um, but uh, she said, sing it. And I'm like, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know what I'm going to sing about. She fell asleep. And while she was asleep, I sang the whole song. Wow. So, so great things happen when she's sleeping. And even greater thing happened when she woke up and gave me the last line of the chorus about the trying to make his way home because I was stuck on that. So Very nice. Also, Let I heard recently uh, or semi-recently, I guess, was an inter interesting arrangement for the Beatles' help which I thought was like the Beatles hooterized, basically. Yeah. And I, it was really cool. I was like, wow, I, I didn't, this is a really unique thing to do to basically take that classic song and make it your own, you know? You know, it, what, that was not my intent. Um, I came up with, with the riff. It was actually started on the mandola right. and then the guitar, and I was going to write a song to it. I had a track that, that I really liked, and I started singing, and all of a sudden, I started singing the verse to help <laughs> over it. And, and I realized I could sing the whole song over this track that I had made. And then I had to make a decision. And I decided that there's no way I was going to write a better song than help over that track. And it was right at the beginning of COVID. Um, and it just seemed to fit the time. I mean, I think it's something we were, we were all feeling at the time. Absolutely. Um, I don't know if you saw the artwork, what, what saw the artwork for the yes. single? Yeah, but <laughs> that was that was um, actually my, my son helped me with that. Uh, he he showed me, reminded me of the, the Beatles original cover where they're doing semaphore in blue coats. And then I said, right. let's make it let's make it blue surgical gloves in sign language. Right, right. Yeah, I tell the sign language. It's, that's, it was great. That's a it's a great little twist on it on a classic. And uh, so tell me a little bit about like this new album that's coming out. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's in include, obviously, Sarah, when she's sleeping. There's a lot of speculation on what other music is there. Is 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 oh. the album done, or is there more to come based on what's out there now? It's it's. I think it's done. Um, um, I, I stopped at ten. Honestly, I I could I could put thirty tracks on this album, but <laughs> I I just felt like um, this was a particular cohesive body of work, all of which I've done, all, almost all of which I've done not during the, the pandemic phase, but my sort of time in exile here in Sweden. We right. moved here in 2017 and I, I do love it here. I've been going back and forth to home, which I need because that is, that is home. Right. Uh, though, though I feel at home here, there, there is a difference. I have my studio there. Um, here I have a room in the basement, which I'm very lucky to have <laughs> with a laptop, a good microphone and a couple of guitars and a bass right. and a mandolin. So That's I'm able to need. do, it, it is. And then I've got, you know, drummers all over the world who can record themselves um, for me. So the, the only song that predates my, my time here is um, a single I released called Heaven Ain't Gonna Save Us, which I wrote the day after the 2016 election. And I decided to release the day after the 2020 election because it was equally relevant, though the shoe right. was on the other foot. So, got it, got it. So, um, Another question I was going to ask, I know in 2007, there was a bit of a Hooter reunion uh, with Time Stand Still. And, um, you know, you had some great songs on that as well. But I'm wondering, are, are you still in touch with the, the other members of the band? Is there possibly another Hooter reunion in the offing? Well, there is no reunion because we never broke up and we've been active all these years. In fact, uh, 2020, we had a very extensive uh, 40th anniversary tour booked in, wow. in uh, Germany, which has now, now been pushed back, I think, to 2022. But um, no, the band is, is very active. Uh, we released, we released um, Time Stand Still in well, 2007 in Europe, 2008 right. in the US. Then we released a double live album called Both Sides Live. Then we released an EP in 2010. And, um, you know, for, for a band like us, a band that's been around for, 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 for this long to, to release new music, I know a lot of bands do it because it keeps their cred going and because the fans say they want it. But our show is almost three hours long now and we're, wow. they're, we're still not doing a lot of songs that the fans want to hear. So which song are we not going to play in our set to play a new song? 
right. You know, well, like, I'm like sure the, the Eagles have the same problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, that being said, you know, Rob and I are pretty much constant contact and we, we're trying to figure out what, if any, would be the next move in terms of recording new music. Right. I mean, and, and that's getting to my next question. Like, uh, how difficult has it been? What are the challenges you're running into now that you're doing things, um, you know, independently, so to speak? You're not, you don't have major label uh, backing behind, you know, a lot of the marketing and everything that's involved with an album. So it's harder, and it's also harder to get that music out to your audience as a result, because there's no sort of, I think since 2000. 12 or something, there hasn't really been a, what I would call a, a common uh, music mind among the public. It's all separated into little genres, like, you know, my genre, power pop, and a whole bunch of others. No, it's totally, it's totally balkanized now. Yes. It's tribal. And, you know, my tribe is very small. And I, and, and I understood that going, going into this record. Um, I didn't put it out with any expectations other than making the music that I've made recently available for, for those who, who want to hear it. Um, you know, most of the music that sounds like what I'm doing really came out 30, 40 years ago. Yeah. Um, even though, I mean, really, I, I think I sound more 70s or 90s than 80s. A, a, 80s isn't really a thing for me. Yeah, it's, it's more, Although, I think the 80s sound is more based on the instruments you use and the recording technique than, than it is the music itself. Yeah, although I think sonically, most '80s recordings, you know, they have the drum machines, they have the, right. they have the, you know, the the, the digital synths making those horrible bell-like sounds. Yeah. Yep. Um, um, so you know, sonically, look, I go back to the '60s and '70s. Those are the records that that really excited me, and the '90s. You know, I think grunge was a great time. Yes. Uh, sonically, you know, song-wise, not so much. It's really a shame Kurt Cobain didn't get to stick around and uh, because I think his best work was still ahead of him. Yep. But, um, but, um, but uh, yeah, you know, it's really, it's thanks to people like you do, you know, doing what you're doing that, that there's a forum for, for, for this music. Yeah. And I, I, I want to continue to spread this music and, and uh, spread the sound because there are still a lot of people out there who want to listen to, uh, you know, classic sounding rock and roll and, and, and uh, classic sounding rock pop as you speak, or power pop, uh, as I like to define it. And, uh, you know, people are, you know, they don't hear it on the radio as much anymore. They, and, and even the oldies stations don't necessarily play it. So it, it's really hard to get to find yeah. uh, your audience at this point. And it's just up to people uh, to actually seek it out. And yeah. uh, what I try and do is amplify that for the artists and for the community at large. So, um, but when do you think we can expect this new uh, solo album of yours to be coming out? It's uh, May. We're looking at May. Wonderful. Um, Wonderful. Yeah, well, I, um, I look forward to seeing it. I look forward to hearing it. And um, thank you so much for your time, Eric. I appreciate it. And uh, I will we'll stay in touch. And I want to review that album when it comes out yeah. and, uh, and promote it. And uh, hopefully uh, many more to come. Because uh, I, you know you are a very a super creative person. I've I've always appreciated the way you can put a hook into a song, and the way it just comes naturally to you almost. You, and you know it when you hear it too. It's one of those things. Uh, yep, I, I do, I do. And by the way, I have I actually have another single coming out on April thirtieth. The next single, which ironically is called "Back in the Eighties." <laughs> That's great. That's Although great. Although it's dude. not. Although it does, it does um, name check a couple of um, uh, things that happened in the '80s. It's not about the '80s. It's really right. more about about nostalgia and appreciating here and now. And you know, it's a it's a bigger statement than that. And there's a great video that that was shot last summer here in Sweden, up in the countryside. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, when I played the song for the the director, the brilliant Swedish Swedish filmmaker, he. Um, his idea was not to make it the 1980s, but to make it another 80s. Oh, okay. And, All yep. right, we're gonna look forward to that one. Thank you again, Eric Vazilian. Um, please look for his new album coming out in, uh, you know, in May, like you had mentioned, and um, we'll be, we'll be uh, checking it out. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. Thanks Take very much. Take care. You All too. right, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.